Hello, my name's Matthew, and welcome to the first of two short digital tours of our new exhibition, Australian Dreams, Picturing Our Built World. The exhibition looks at the way that artists, photographers, and printmakers have represented Australia's built environment. Sometimes beautiful, sometimes ugly, these buildings are the backdrops to our lives. They reflect our dreams, our hopes, and they also give some sense of our own identity. The first space we're going to look at today looks at images taken from the 19th century. Let's go and have a look. So here I am in front of a work by S.T. Gill, uh, and it's based on a sketch that the explorer Charles Sturt made during an expedition into Central Australia in the 1840s. Uh, in, the, in his journal from the expedition, Sturt made reference to um, a lot of Aboriginal uh, dwellings and structures, and he, um, he thought that the larger domes here were shelters for people, and the smaller ones here were used for storing grain. Uh, and this image and that particular expedition and its journal are, are very interesting at the moment because um, Bruce Pascoe, the Indigenous writer, uh, it was one of the sources he's, he used for his book Dark Emu, uh, which goes back and, and looks at um, sources that document Indigenous agriculture, architecture and uh, engineering. Now, S.T. Gill was a very versatile artist. He was probably most well known for being an artist of the gold fields, but he also did a lot of uh, architectural drawings and prints and watercolours of buildings in Melbourne, Sydney, Adelaide, and throughout Victoria. Uh, this one is of the oldest shopping arcade in Australia, the Royal Arcade in Melbourne. This is another... Um, delicate little watercolour um, of a windmill in Sydney. And I think this is particularly interesting because uh, the windmills in Sydney, uh, this one which was built near the State Library of New South Wales in 1805, I think, and the other one that was built near the rocks would have been the tallest structures um, in the township for about 15 years uh, until this building was built. Um, Hyde Park Barracks. Uh, now this was designed by the convict architect um, Francis Greenway, who was also the first New South Wales government architect. And I think it may have been the first three-storey building uh, in Sydney. The picture itself was by Conrad Martins, who was well known uh, for taking or doing these kinds of watercolours, um, picturesque views of Sydney Harbour with grand colonial estates. And this particular one, Craig End, was designed by the Surveyor General Sir Thomas Mitchell um, and completed, I think, in 1829, but fortunate, unfortunately torn down in the 1920s. Um, and this is uh, present-day Darlinghurst. Now, Martins was the first artist to have a sustained career, uh, professional artist to have a sustained career in Australia, but after the gold rush, many, many more uh, professional artists came out from Europe, like Nicolas Chevalier. And they made money from documenting colonial states as well, uh, both the humble and the grand. And in this particular picture by Chevalier, we see both the humble, this timber um, house here, and the grand, uh, a much more permanent Georgian uh, mansion in the background, which was obviously the mansion built after this particular farmer had made their money. Anyway, that's it for this room. Let's go into the next room and look at some pictures from the early 20th century. So in the early decades of the 20th century, artists started to become a little bit uh, nostalgic and they went back and looked at the grand old colonial buildings of Sydney and Tasmania and represented them in a, in a kind of romantic way. Uh, one particular artist and architect, William Hardy Wilson, um, was an early preservation campaigner. And around about the time of 1912 to 1922, he traveled around New South Wales and Tasmania, documenting some of the grandest colonial houses like this one, Burdekin House, which was on Macquarie Street in Sydney. Uh, once upon a time, it was considered the grandest colonial house in Sydney, uh, but it was torn down in the early 1930s. This house over here, however, did survive. This is old government house in Parramatta. Um, which is now one of the oldest buildings in Australia. It was built uh, in the first decades of the 19th century and it was considered a rural retreat at the time for the governor of New South Wales. Now, there were other artists who documented the grand old colonial buildings of New South Wales. Artists like Hardy 
Wilson, um, not just the Hardy Wilson, I should say, but Harold Casano and, and Lionel Lindsay. Um, but those artists, like Casano, were also interested in the slums of the city, uh, around the rocks, um, around North Sydney, like this particular picture here in Dohout Lane, um, and also in the inner city. This one is in Surrey Hills, and this one is in the city itself, uh, Margaret Street, right in the CBD. And what I think is interesting about Casno's work is that the buildings start to look like the backdrops um, of a stage or, or, or a set uh, where there are small, minor human dramas pl uh, taking place. And um, I've looked at this particular picture quite a few times and wondered, what has that guy said to that guy to make him turn around? Now let's go and have a look at Lionel Lindsay's work. So this is Lionel Lindsay's work. Uh, this is Old Essex Street in the Rocks. And Lindsay was also, like Casno, interested in the way that um, people inhabited the built world in these regions of Sydney. Uh, so we've got people working here, conversing. This particular image I like um, because it's got the washerwoman in the front here. But I also like this guy just kind of idly leaning against the archway. This is uh, Argyle, the Argyle Cut in the rocks, and this is um, a particular, particularly favourite location for artists and uh, filmmakers. And, and this shows the cut uh, before the Harbour Bridge was built, and that's Princess Street running across one of, those, um, one of those parts of the cut. But the cut changed significantly when they started to build the bridge in the 1920s. And this particular image by Herbert Gallup shows Princess Street being demolished to make way for the Bradfield Highway that goes over the bridge. This other image by Gallup um, isn't one of destruction. I guess you could say it's kind of a, a look towards the future. There's something very modern and hopeful about uh, the built environment here. The city is, looks like it's rising up and, and um, it looks very modern. And in fact, in our next talk, we're going to look at some modern pictures of modern buildings. So hopefully you'll join me then.